friends, it has been our misfortune to welcome the white man. We have been deceived. He brought with him some shining things that pleased our eyes. He brought weapons more effective than our own. Above all, he brought the spirit water that makes one forget old age, weakness, and sorrow. My countrymen, shall the glittering trinkets of this rich man, his deceitful drink that overcomes the mind, shall these things tempt us to give up our homes, our hunting grounds, and the honorable teachings of our elders? Shall we permit ourselves to be driven to and fro, to be herded like cattle of the white man? Those natives who go over to the white man can be nothing but beggars, for he respects only riches. And how can a native be a rich man? He cannot without ceasing to be a native. As for me, I have listened patiently to the promises of the Great Father, but his memory is short. I am now done with him. This is all I have to say. The whites who are civilized and educated swindle me, and I am not hard to swindle because I do not know how to read and write. We do not want riches. We want peace and love. They made us many promises more than I can remember, but they never kept but one. They promised to take our land, and they took it. The Great Spirit will not make me suffer because I am ignorant. He will put me in a place where I shall be better off than in this world. Even if you live 40 or 50 years in this world and then die, you cannot take all your goods with you. When we first had this land, we were strong. Now are melting like snow on the hillside, while you are grown like spring grass. In 1868, men came out and brought papers. We could not read them, and they did not tell us truly what was in them. We thought the treaty was to remove the forts and for us to cease from fighting. When I reached Washington, the Great Father explained to me that the interpreters had deceived me. All I want is what is right and just. All the promises made in the treaty have never been fulfilled. The object of the whites is to crush the native down to nothing. We were told that they wished merely to pass through our country, to seek for gold in the far west. Yet before the ashes of the council are cold, the Great Father is building his forts among us. His presence here is an insult to the spirits of our ancestors. Are we then to give up their sacred graves to be plowed for corn? The Great Spirit raised both the white man and the native. I think he raised the native first. He raised me in this land. It belongs to me. The white man was raised over the great waters, and his land is over there. Since they crossed the sea, I have given them room there are now white people all about me. I have but a small spot of land left. The Great Spirit told me to keep it. When I was a young man, I was poor, in a war with other nations. I was in 87 fights. There I received my name and was made chief of my nation. But now I am old and I am for peace. I was a warrior on this land where the sun rises. Now I come from where the sun sets. 
whose voice was first sounded on this land, the red people with bows and arrows. The Great Father says he is good and kind to us. I can't see it. You whites make all the ammunition. I hope the Great Heavenly Father, who looks down upon us, will give all the tribes his blessing that we may go forth in peace and live in peace all our days and that he will look down upon our children and finally lift us far above this earth. I am poor and naked, but I am the chief of the nation. We do not want riches, but we want to train our children right. Riches will do us no good. We could not take them with us to the other world. We do not want riches. We want peace and love. I have come a long distance to my great father's house. See if I have left any blood in his land when I go. When the white man comes into my country, he leaves a trail of blood behind him. I was born a Lakota, and I shall die a Lakota. Before the white man came to our countries, the Lakota were free people. They made their own laws and governed themselves as it seemed good to them. Now, the priests and ministers tell us that we have lived wickedly when we lived before the white man came among us. Whose fault was this? We lived right as we were taught it was right. Shall we be punished for this? I am not sure that what these people tell me is true. You who eat three times a day and see your children well and happy around you cannot understand what a starving native feels. We were faint with hunger and maddened by despair. We held our dying children and felt their little bodies tremble as their soul went out and left only a dead weight in our hands. Our children are dying off like sheep. The country does not suit them. Shadows are long and dark before me. I shall soon lie down and rise no more. While my spirit is with my body, the smoke of my breath shall be towards the sun, for he knows all things and knows that I am still true to him. Taku Shanskan is familiar with my spirit, and when I die, I will go with him. Then I will be with my forefathers. If this is not in the heaven of the white man, I shall be satisfied. The Wakantanka of the white man has overcome him, but I shall remain true to my ancestors. When you buy anything with money, I want you to buy me what is useful. I do not want city flour, rotten tobacco, and soldiers' old clothes dyed black. As a child, I was taught the Taku Wakan were powerful and could do strange things. This was taught me by the wise men and the shamans. They taught me that I could gain their favor by being kind to my people and brave before my enemies, by telling the truth and living straight, by fighting for my people and their hunting grounds. When the white man came, we gave them lands and did not wish to hurt them. But the white man drove us back and took our lands. Then the great father made us many promises, but they are not kept. He promised to give us large presents, and when they came to us, they were small. They seemed to be lost on the way. I do not allow my nation or any white man to bring a drop of liquor into my country. If he does, that is the last of him and his liquor. 
Look at me. I am poor and naked. I do not want war with my government. If the Great Father kept white men out of my country, then peace would last forever. The Great Spirit raised me up in this land and has raised you in another land. What I have said, I mean. I mean to keep this land. There was no hope on earth, and God seemed to have forgotten us. Some said they saw the Son of God. Others did not see him. If he had come, he would do some great things as he had done before. We doubted it because we had seen neither him nor his works. The people did not know. They did not care. They snatched at the hope. They seemed like crazy men asking for mercy. They caught at the promise they heard he had made. The white men were frightened and called for soldiers. We had begged for our lives and the white men thought we wanted theirs. We heard that soldiers were coming. We did not fear. We hoped that we could tell them our troubles and get help. A white man said the soldiers meant to kill us. We did not believe it, but some were frightened and ran to the Badlands. We do not want riches. We want peace and love.